show you, we little bugger. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My name is Mackie, and today we're going to be looking at God of War. More specifically, we're going to go over a hidden quest you may or may not have already stumbled upon, the Flight of Fafnir. There's a quest available earlier in the game from Sindri that leads you to Fafnir's storeroom. However, after finishing that quest, you may have been led to believe that the dwarf Fafnir is dead. As it turns out, he isn't dead at all. He's also not a dwarf. Now he's a massive dragon chained to the ground and very, very angry. So unenamored is he with his eternal bondage that he won't recognize your attempts to set him free and will constantly breathe lightning upon you whilst you struggle to survive against sporadic groups of increasingly difficult baddies. In order to reach old Faffy, you need to have at least made it up to the second encounter with the World Serpent. After the water has receded in the Lake of Nine for the second time, hop in your canoe and speed off to the northeast corner of the map. Right here. Before you park at the beach, snag the Dew of Yggdra of Yggdrasil for a permanent plus two strength enhancement. Once on the beach, take a look on yonder to the top of that right hand statue to kill one of Odin's street pigeons. Use your shock arrows to blow up the sap preventing your climb and then once more on the batch after climbing the second ledge. Jump back down and open the chest to earn yourself a Niflheim rune cipher. Also, you can optionally choose to partake in the Rift Challenge. This one's going to bring forth a heavy frost dragger and two little frost boys. If you're under leveled for this like me, then this is going to be a little bit tricky because they have some gnarly conal attacks that I hadn't seen before. They will typically use this attack three times in a row, so make sure that you keep your guard up or keep rolling after the first two. You can cheese one of them off the edge right at the start using anything with knockback and then slowly whittle the others down with the appropriate use of some heavy fisting. You'll be given a Dust of Realms crafting material for your efforts. Moving forward, climb back up the second ledge and proceed down the path to a large wooden door. Open it up to be greeted emphatically by Fafnir. The mirror will give some brief backstory and you can take a moment to get the lay of the land. Fafnir is held captive by three rune locks located at the left, right, and center of the arena, with small groups of enemies placed conveniently at each. All of the enemies here are either level 4 or 5, and I was able to complete this quest with gear about halfway through level 3, but mileage will vary depending on your build. The left lock is by far the easiest, followed by the middle one, and you really shouldn't have too much of a problem mopping them up. In the center, make sure you're aware of Fafnir's lightning attacks. At this point, they are reliably simple to avoid as long as you keep them in the back of your mind. The right hand lock can actually be a real pain. There's a traveler here and he wields a two-handed greatsword and heavy armor. He's also going to be joined intermittently by both ranged and melee dragger. My advice is to delete the little guys as soon as they arrive, dodging the traveler's attacks where possible. They really aren't that bad to evade as long as you see his tells. Parries and evasion will net you some solid openings to wail on him. Eventually, his armor is going to start to erode, and that's when you can bring the hammer down. Or, I guess the axe. Either way, bring it down and make it stick. Go ahead and break that last lock, and you'll be able to head back down in front of old Fafnator 3000 to release him. Before you get to it, however, a final group of enemies will spawn. Two heavy Draugr and a witch that will rudely attack simultaneously. Fafnir will somehow still be unable to discern your desire to free him and will continue to ensure his infinite imprisonment by showering you with some lightning love. Because of this, the encounter becomes far more simple if you kite your foes into the alcove where the leftmost lock was. For whatever reason, Fafnir won't punch himself in the face here and the witch seems somewhat hesitant to enter as well. Although I'm not willing to count that out as blind luck. Either way, take your time and patiently defeat each of the enemies and then make a sprint to release the final locking mechanism to lock in your loot. Fafnir will finally catch on, and after deciding whether or not to eat you anyway, will fly away and leave you the brilliant scale of the Unchained. A runic gear enchantment that gifts some extra runic every time you use a runic ability, which is pretty sweet if you're running a cooldown or runic build. These kinds of random quests with no lead-ins are one of the things that I absolutely love about this game, in addition to all the obvious other things that have garnered endless praise from the critic and fan community since the launch last week. There are many, many more such quests, including two other dragon quests that complete the set. Stay tuned over the next few days for guides to both of the other Serpentine set pieces, and pretty please like and subscribe if you found this either helpful or entertaining. Until next time, keep it breezy, boys.